guys welcome to another jamaica tales video a jamaican living in germany in the last video i talked about my anniversary in germany and the many things that i love about living in this country but just to balance things out in this video i'm gonna be talking about some of the things that annoy me and even some of the things that i hate about living in this country in the last video i talked about the many things that i love about living in germany and you would think to an extent that Germany is somehow my paradise and like everything in this country is kind of perfect from my perspective but that's like so far from the truth. I wanted to record this video a long time ago but somehow I wasn't really convinced if I should really make a rant video but somehow yeah maybe I'm German enough so now I can rant about things. The foundation for a lot of these things is just based on the socialization that I have growing up in Jamaica. It's always pitched to us that okay in these developed countries like Germany and so on you know things are great things work well and so on and then we have these expectations in the back of our heads and when i came to this country a lot of these expectations weren't met and that's why a lot of these things actually annoy me so much because it's like i'm still struggling with this idea that i had from years ago like maybe from my childhood and somehow like just being disappointed constantly when i recognize yeah things aren't always as they seem. You're gonna have to figure out which one annoys me and which one I actually hate. I'm not gonna classify them, but I'm just gonna talk about different things. Let us start off with the Deutsche Bahn, the German rail company. I have so many stories I could tell you. They have problems with being late. Sometimes trains are canceled. I have a trip next week and they canceled that train for whatever reason. They are always surprised when you take Deutsche Bahn. But there's one single thing that bothers me. And it's whenever things go wrong and there's an announcement. We're apologizing um, for the inconvenience. I hate to hear that. I hate it. I hate it because for me, every time that I hear it, it's kind of reminding me that I'm in a relationship with someone and they constantly do things that drive me crazy. Every time they do these things, every time they cheat on me and whatever, they disappoint me. They just say, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It won't happen again. And this happens again and again and again. It would be nice for them just to leave out that part because for me, it just means nothing. It's like, I've heard it so many times. The reasons that they give for, you know, the trains not working or whatever, cancellations or delays. Sometimes I have the feeling like somebody's just there and, you know, they're just gambling. You know, there's like some slot machine and you're like, okay, let's go. Which reason are we going to give these people today? Sometimes it just doesn't make sense to me. It's like, I <laughs> I just don't get it. Public transportation is the main, and you could say the only way, apart from my bicycle, that I get around in Germany. Because I'm so dependent on it, then when these little problems happen, then you can just imagine when you're on your way to the airport, you leave four hours before and you still manage to get there one hour before your flight leaves. Another thing that bothers me with trains is something that I'm also guilty of doing. We just love to put our things on the seat next to us. And then people have to come and they have to ask, hey, yeah, is this seat available? When we could easily most time just put our bags like in the overhead compartments. Why do we do this? Like really? <laughs> Another thing that I recognize that has been on the rise in Germany is Denglish. This is where people just mix English with German. I really don't know why people do it. I don't know if they do it because it sounds cool because they want to show that yeah I can speak English or maybe sometimes it's just easier to remember a word in English because you know watching movies and so I don't know why people do it but I don't know it's not I, I'm not really a fan of it it just sounds weird I mean this would never happen like as a native English speaker nowhere would like all of a sudden just start throwing random foreign words into like regular language it would just never happen but somehow in german it's a thing now where a lot of people that's how they speak you know they're they're talking and it's like all of a sudden you just hear an english word i'm like what why do people need to then throw in like these english words like i would say leave it to people like me that are not really good at german and we're speaking german and then we sometimes we don't know what the word is in in, in german so we just have to use the english word but with like these native speakers all of a sudden like every second third word you're throwing in english word i'm like <laughs> why how people use some of these words like these english words in german it's like it's not what you think it means so it's completely wrong how the word is being used or the meaning that's associated with it and i don't know if this is the way that german is going to be evolving over the next couple of years i don't know 
I cannot make a video like this and not talk about German bureaucracy and their love for paper. Like that relationship is going strong. Couple months ago, I wanted to make an appointment and I sent an email to the, to the administration and they're like, yeah, we can give you an appointment in six months. Right. Okay. okay. Later on, they contacted me that way. We can give you an early appointment. Now I went to this, this appointment and it was just for five minutes five minutes they wanted me to wait six months for a five minute meeting and in this meeting it was just me giving them my documents and they're like okay that's okay that's okay that's okay and i'm like this could have been an email i could have sent you a copy of all of these documents and you didn't even have to schedule a meeting with me but i don't know i don't know it's crazy sometimes like just how how the, the love for paper and the love for processes where especially as an immigrant and you have to deal with for example your employer and you have to talk and there's immigration office and they're saying one thing the employer is saying another thing and this office is saying another thing and it's like yeah who am i supposed to listen to it's just frustrating sometimes because like i don't know sometimes i think germans make work for themselves like they make things so complicated that they have more work to do and this love for paper i find it funny sometimes they're, they're sending me mail like german the deutsche Bahn again they're sending me a, a letter to say yeah we want to start saving paper so send us your email address and i'm like you have my email address already <laughs> why are you sending me a letter or even my insurance company you know what they did they sent me a letter telling me that i should call them you have my number. You have my email address. Why are we doing this? You can see I don't like paper. Getting so much paper and then of course you're living in Germany so you better keep them because anything can happen. It's like, oh, I still, I still haven't adapted to it and I still make mistakes by throwing away things and then a couple months later I'm like, oh. Something else that bothers me in Germany is sometimes the general vibe I get. People love to complain and they tend to be very pessimistic about, I would call them some very simple things. I was just in Lithuania and I was talking to a friend there and he was pretty much saying, confirming the very same thing. When he talks to people from Western Europe, they have a very different idea of problems in comparison to Eastern Europe. And someone from, Jer from Jamaica, you can imagine, just the vast difference from like the things that people complain about in this country like are real luxury problems sometimes and i recognize that i get caught up in this sometimes here i'm meckering about some things that are like oh shando really is this is this really a problem is this in the grand scheme of things how important is this thing and yes i know it's kind of an oxymoron and i'm complaining about the things that germans love to complain about but i'll only this one time just to show you how bad my impression of Germans are about them being pessimistic. I saw this woman on the other side of the street and she was just walking and she was just smiling. She was genuinely happy. And the first thought that I had in my mind is like, what is wrong with this woman? Is something, is she crazy or what? Because that's not something I see in this country. I see people walking around with very long faces. <laughs> Germany and the word digitalization don't go very well together. One good example is of course, mobile data. Oh, man, it, 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 it pains my heart to talk about this one because I still can't, I don't, but it pains my heart because I don't understand it. I just can't understand why in a country like this, it is so challenging. You're sitting on a train for a journey across Germany, for half of the journey, you will have no reception on your mobile phone. And you don't even have to take the train, even within a city, like a well-populated city, you can be walking and you can be in certain places or even not too far out of the city and you have absolutely no service. Like I've seen on my phone where I'm in Germany and I'm roaming and I'm like, how is that even possible? The other thing is the customer service. Like what is customer service in, in Germany? I changed to a new network provider last December. After I changed, there were just problems where I wasn't getting like any of these one-time passwords, text messages for like almost two months. And I was contacting the, the provider over and over again, yeah, I'm not getting messages. Like, yeah, we can't reproduce it. Um, contact your bank and contact wherever. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, I'm paying for this service, and it's like they're like, yeah, it's your problem. And then that's literally one of the answers that I got at one point. They're like, yeah, we can't do anything. You're just gonna have to deal with that and just accept it. And I'm like, what? How does that even work? Another thing that annoys me 
is the cash culture. It annoys me again because of my expectations and because of what I have seen in so many of the other countries that I've visited where some street vendor, they just lay out a mat and they have things that they're selling there that you can go to them and you can pay with a card or even like some of the neighboring countries to Germany. Paying with a card is normal. Sometimes that's the only way that you can pay. In Germany, it's a complete opposite to where you go to certain places and you can only pay with cash. Or sometimes if you can pay with card, then you can only pay with the bank card, which I don't even have a bank card. And when I was changing my bag, I was really worried because I'm like, am I even gonna be able to pay at like different places? And thankfully that has been improving. When I use Apple Pay on my Apple Watch, some people are amazed by it. Like, well, how you can pay with your watch? And I guess it's weird that people are impressed by that. My German has definitely gotten better and on paper I'm like up at up to B2, but there's still something that annoys me about German and it's numbers. My English brain still can't really understand German numbers because they decide to do this really weird thing where in English is it 24? In German, it's like 420. And I struggle ever so often where I hear a number and I have to be like, oh, it goes this way. And I still make mistakes with that. And you don't want to be making mistakes like this when you're dealing with money. And this has happened many times before where I'm paying for something and I, I want to give a tip. And instead of saying like 57, I say 75. And I'm like, the service wasn't that, not that good to be getting such a big tip. Even like saying a lower number than what I, yeah, it's just, yeah, these numbers, I don't know. It just, it just messes up my brain. It's annoying. It's frustrating. And like I said, it gets me in trouble so many times. There you have it. That's pretty much my rant about things that annoy me. And even some of the things that I really hate about living in Germany. It doesn't matter where you live on this earth. Nowhere is going to be perfect and nowhere is paradise. That's why I just try my best to adapt and to just go with it because what else can you do? I mean, you might not like something, but you still just have to adapt and to go with it because that's what you do when you decide to, you know, fly halfway across the world. Even if I was still living in Jamaica, I mean, there would still be things that I don't like and things that I would just have to accept. And because that's just how life is. The video is over, but the conversation doesn't have to end. We can continue down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys, especially those of you living in Germany. What are some of the things that annoy you about living in this country, especially for the Germans? I wonder if some of you can actually agree with me on some of these things, or it's just because of my background why they annoy me. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and see you in the next Jamaican Tales video.